Hey, what's up, Lee? Ron here. So today we're gonna learn my number one trick for avoiding overworked watercolors. And it has to do with how you interpret this scene and then how you paint it. So interpreting it as a few simple shapes will already make the scene feel simpler for the viewer, but simpler in a good way. That's the first thing. And I'm gonna show you now as I'm drawing this. Uh, and then the other thing is how you paint. Uh, and that has to do with your even washes and uh, shapes that flow together. So if you manage to get shapes too, and I'm gonna do a very rough kind of painting here to show you, because we don't need much more than that sketch, sorry, not painting. Um, shapes that flow together will feel merged. Uh, and that's actually the most important thing here. Uh, now I do wanna mention, if you wanna learn uh, how to do this on a higher level and in more detail, check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course, link in the description box below. We'll talk about that more a little or later on. Uh, so we have this mountain ridge, beautiful, beautiful uh, view. I believe it's in Austria. And then we have this road coming from the side here. Now this is what you wanna pay attention to, keeping shapes flat when they are flat so that it actually feels like we're looking at this from the right angle. Then this is gonna turn around like that. I'm actually gonna get it more to the right, not stop it to the left. Uh, and then this is flat. This is wider. Then again, this is a little flat and this is wider. Now, we have two shapes here basically. The left side of the road, the right side of the road. We do have this very vague mountain ridge. We can handle that later on if we choose to, but we actually don't have to. Uh, so let's get to it. The way you paint your shapes, and I'm keeping this one, again, fairly simple. In terms of colors, French ultramarine, um, uh, Turner's yellow, quinacridone rose, doesn't matter, use whatever colors you have, honestly. Does not matter, what matters is uh, that you perhaps keep it to a minimum palette. Uh, don't go with 20 paints, because that won't help us. So I'm mixing a bit in advance here, so I'm mixing my uh, French ultramarine with my Turner's yellow, which is gonna produce this nice little green. Let me get a test paper, show you. There we go. Now, this green is too green, so I'm gonna neutralize with a bit of quinacridone uh, because what we see and the reference is actually quite gray. Now, look at what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep this mix quite wet because it is about how we paint. We wanna make sure, and I have my reference there edited in multiple different ways uh, to show the values as well. Um, you can get a copy of the, again, reference photo uh, and paint it yourself. Uh, but things are relatively gray, more than you would think. So I'm starting with a fairly wet wash uh, to get things flowing properly because I want the shape to flow together, okay? That's the main thing uh, we wanna pay attention to at this stage. So I have time, you see? Uh, I'm using enough water so that I actually have some reaction time. And honestly, all I'm concerned with is the left side for now. You could start painting the right side um, and you get the advantage of mixing the exact same color. You don't have to remix, but if you wanna keep things simple, let's just tackle that left side. So I'm gonna turn my mix into more of a green. How am I gonna do this? I'm gonna add a bit more blue and a bit more yellow, and we'll start greening it up, okay? Now, again, this is quite gray. I'm not following the colors I'm seeing exactly. Uh, I actually don't care about it in this specific process, but it is quite gray. Now, look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a bit of my Turner's yellow and I'm just gonna use it as is uh, to bring out some more yellowness to it, but the shape is still flowing together. And that's what you wanna pay attention to. Uh, and then I might even add a bit of uh, quinacridone rose and that same yellow to make it a little brown in some spots because, again, I see some brown here. I see some uh, mild oranges and so on. Now, the trees, are a little darker, as you can tell. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna, while this left side uh, is still a little wet, we're gonna come back and mix this neutral. You could actually even use some neutral tint here. We're going fairly uh, neutral and charging a bit of paint into the wet area. Now the reason I can do that is because I kept my wash fairly wet. Uh, so I have some more reaction time but still one wash, it's still one shape. And remember, shapes that merge together that are wet enough will be read as a single individual shape. Uh, and I can even inject a tree here and there 
if I deem it proper. But I'm still working in very narrow area just on the left side. And then we're going to come back here, add a bit more water. Now, here's actually where things get a little stronger. I'm going to add some pyrrole scarlet because I feel like there's a bit of warmth in that brown uh, that my quinacridone just not achieving. And I'm going to make my uh, mix a little stronger here. Bottom. And look at what I'm going to do. So I'm going to paint all the way to the road. And then I'm just going to stop. Okay. And what's going to happen is I have to get closer and away from the mic. What's going to happen is because we painted this as one big shape. We've avoided overwork for this section of the painting, essentially. That's what happened. Okay. Now let me introduce a bit of black and more of the crinacridone rose here. Uh, not crinacridone, uh, pyrrole scarlet. And I'm going to drop in a few trees here up close. And when you're doing this kind of wet and wet, you really need to dig into the paint and make sure it's dark enough on the palette. You'll see it barely moving. Okay. Um, and I know how dark this appears. Don't worry. It's going to dry much, um, much lighter and more kind of, uh, you'll see more free. Now, if you do want to break it up a bit and not have such, uh, a strong, um, separation between different shapes, what you can do is actually grab a bit of, uh, that may be warmish gray in our example. Uh, and look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to, because the road is gray, going to paint the road, but let it touch two small spots with the mountain ridge we just painted. Uh, this will, and I'll leave a white gap for most of it because there is this white stripe, but I'm going to let it touch and stop. What this does is break a bit of the... Um, harshness of that edge that way. But look at how it's very controlled. We just worked on that section. Now we're, we're moving on to the right section. So if you're overworking, choose something to be handled as a large shape. Paint it like that. Paint it as if it's one shape. Okay. Let me show you the other side, which is going to be very similar. Um, now, I'm going to start with the same kind of color I have because it's a nice gray. Uh, but I will make some changes for this side. First off, I need to be careful not to touch too much of the road here. Uh, so we're going to start gray here. Some very uh, loose abstract trees. Now what I'm going to do is um, combine my efforts so that I'm still connecting it to the colors on the other side. But I am going to introduce a bit of a different scheme here and there. So uh, this time I'm reaching into my lemon yellow. So I want this a bit of a brighter green that I'm recognizing here. But still my wash and I'm going to touch the trees, keep some of it separate, but most of it still connected. But I'm still keeping my wash again fairly light. As I reach here, this point, I'm going to neutralize with a bit of my pyrrole scarlet because it will create this beautiful brown orange right down the center. And again, still quite a wet wash. But as I'm reaching here, I'm going to start darkening it. Same kind of a deal. One thing you can do that's very fun, break, split your color. So instead of mixing green here, put some blue and then put some yellow or, you know, the other yellow in this case, because I want to go back to colors similar to there and let them kind of work themselves out. This is something I like to do often. Let the colors mix on paper, um, which is kind of similar to not mixing any color, but we are mixing some colors. Uh, now, as we reach here, let me orange it up a bit. I'm, I'm taking a more creative kind of interpretive approach with the colors on the other side. Like that. And look at what I'm going to do. Uh, here towards the where we get close to the other end, I'm gonna neutralize my mix a bit so that it resembles a bit more of what we have on the left side. So this will make a connection uh, between the two sides. But notice what happens here still it was just one shape, we treated it as fully one big shape. 
I'm really excited by this process. My hand is, I'm literally feeling my hand shaking because I'm excited by it. So funny. I haven't had that in a while, actually. Uh, and then going back to some neutral tint because it doesn't really matter. We can go a little more neutral and gray here on those trees that are closer. But get this mix because we're doing wet and wet and you can gauge how wet the paper is. You see by tilting it, uh, it's not too wet. So you have to work fast um, and use the neutral tint uh, thick enough so that it actually shows and makes an impact. And once again, I'm going to spread out a few trees here and there. Uh, you can actually design some of the shape of those hills um, by following a certain pattern of rocks if you want to. Um, I never had a problem of overworking details. I'm not talking about the washes that we did so far, but details as if as in just the detail itself. I never had a problem of putting too many details in. Um, I think if you feel like you can add more details, just go for it. Worst case, it won't look good. But um, once you're kind of feel like it's done, it's done and you'll you'll develop this kind of sense. Uh, but to me, honestly, this is it. So we can let this dry for a few seconds and then I'm going to come back and, and go over some of the road again, just to get it darker in some spots. It's going to be beautiful. So everything is pretty much dry now and we can move on to the, the kind of last third of the painting. And I do want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. Uh, you actually make this um, give me a lot of freedom to film tons of content, to create tons of content um, and to focus a lot on the quality of the lesson. So I want to thank you so, so much for that. And if you want to help me out and be a part of this, uh, be sure to check out the link to the Patreon below and you'll get, of course, credit. Um, you're going to see your name there uh, in uh, the videos. So thank you so much for that. Now, as for this stage of the painting, we have a few things. We're going to darken the road again, as I mentioned, um, and then we're going to darken it in select spots because you'll see some of it is lighter. And then we're going to add this background. that's a little gloomy, very, um, very subtle, very subtle. You're going to see we don't even have to actually because it looks good enough now, but we can uh, get away with adding a very pale, very pale uh, background. Now, I do want you to, if you can, do me a favor, take a moment, leave a comment under the video and let me know what your biggest lesson from this one is so far. Uh, this actually helps to better internalize the lessons you learn. So uh, it will be good for you and it will be great feedback for me as well. Uh, so if you could uh, do me a favor and just write down what the what's the biggest thing or kind of biggest insight you got from uh, this lesson. So look at what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, just wet the sky a bit um, with almost clean water. Um, I don't care too much. Like I can paint over the details here in the horizon. It's okay. Uh, nothing is going to get too destroyed by it. Um, if you're using good quality paper, that is if you're using um, uh, pulp paper or anything that's not 100% cotton, be careful. Don't do what I'm doing right now. But the point is we have this very light pale mountain in the background. It's going to be ver barely visible because it is actually really visible. Um, if you look at the reference photo. It's barely there. Now we, we do want some of it to show. Uh, but again, just barely. So I'm doing the whole like T consistency. If you want to follow something like Joseph Bukovic's clock, barely anything there, but I do want to hint at that. In fact, let me add some coolness. So you see, I have a bit of blue. I'm just uh, merging it with, uh, my mix here. That's how I like uh, doing this kind of a thing. And this is pretty much it. I'm going to let it dry kind of naturally. I'm just lifting a bit of the water from the bottom, not to get too many lead ins into my trees and everything like that. Um, but that's to me, that's going to be visible enough. It's going to be barely visible, but it's going to be visible. You'll see uh, some of it um, a bit more cool. Go. And let it dry on its own. Now I'm going to switch back to my smaller brush and I'm going to use a similar kind of same mix I used here and we're going to follow it. So you'll notice here the road is pretty light. So I will probably preserve that, but I will darken it. I want to go too dark here. I will darken it around this spot. That it's actually reflecting what you're seeing from above in many cases. And then all the way here. Now here, I'm going to leave a white gap that I kind of see. 
and we're gonna gradually water here to spread out the paint gradually switch over a bit of a darker here um just to anchor the road into the scene and feel a little detached if it's light that's what often happens and this is believe it or not done um very simple interpret the scene in a few simple steps and then take care to paint them as one wash do wet and wet to get your details you can actually get away with this with many different paintings again shapes that flow together will appear to be one shape and will not take up too much attention will probably never look overworked never the same thing with the previous tutorial i did with the uh, not mixing at all so i showed you onions apples when you just let it flow together it will 99 percent of the time not look um uh, overworked so if you just learn that one thing and again if you commented before uh let me know uh, uh and let me know what you, what what's the biggest take from this one it's probably this, but again, I'm gonna leave it to you to decide. Uh, but in any case, yep, this is it. I'm gonna sign this later on scan and show you a final uh, result, of course. I wanna thank you once again. Don't forget, if you wanna learn how to paint like this, learn this principle and many other principles to make your watercolor process much more effective. I would say that's the first thing. There's a lot of decisions you can make, and I have a, a full section on this in the course, in the Frustration Free Watercolor course, a full section on just decisions you make before you even begin your painting that will make it much, much easier. Um, so if you wanna check that out, uh, and again, Patreon, if you support me there, you'll be a huge part of what I'm doing and allow me to paint, make much, much more um, content. And I'm, I'm going to focus on content for the next couple of months. You're going to see some cool stuff. Uh, so thank you so, so much. I will see you next video.